In this video, I want to look at Silver Effects Pro 2, black and white software from Nick Software. Nick was recently bought by Google, so you may see that if you're on the Nick page here, it's now saying the Nick Collection by Google, and their prices have come down a fair bit. Uh, Silver Effects Pro 2 costs $150. But you can also get the whole collection, which they're all pretty good, for $150. So you might as well get the whole shebang. But you can download a free trial. Definitely worth having a look into. So you can get that right here, and they've got some great education on their website. But I'm just going to show you quickly how I go about using this in my workflow. I'm going to go over to Lightroom, and I'm going to pick an image. I've got an image right here that I want to send into Silver Effects Pro for editing. I'm just going to right click on this and choose edit in Silver Effects Pro 2 and it's going to come up with a dialog box and I can choose that I want to send this is a raw file I'm just going to send it into Silver Effects. Now in this case I've already done that just to save some time so I'm just going to go over to Silver Effects and here's what we got. So Silver Effects is going to come by default it's going to look like this. On the left hand side I've got a series of presets and on the right hand side I've got controls. So the presets are sort of like trying to pick up a starting place. So this is a neutral one. I might want to look at, you know, like one maybe like this and say, ah, there we go, that looks better. That might be as much as I want to do, or I can tweak things over here. In my case though, I want to start from a neutral image, so I'm just going to click on that. Now, over here on the side, I've got some different uh, sections that I can adjust. Uh, I think it's meant to start from top to bottom, but I find, generally speaking, that uh, I want to deal with film types and color filter first, because um, otherwise I get the contrast exactly the way I like it, and then everything gets mucked up some more. So if I'm looking to emulate the look of a specific film, perhaps I was a Tri-X shooter and I want to get that look, I can choose any one of these ones down here. So for instance, if I wanted to see what this looked like on Tri-X, I could choose Tri-X. And that will emulate the grain structure, the color sensitivity, and the contrast response. Now in this case, I have no romantic attachment to a specific film, so I'm just going to leave that blank. I'm also going to come up to Color Filter, and this is going to emulate the look of putting a color filter on the front of your lens. So for instance, if I put a red filter in, anything that's bright, that's got red, uh, and it is going to appear brighter. Anything that's got blue, which is sort of roughly the opposite color, is going to get darker. So if I click on this, you'll notice the sky got a little bit darker because the sky is sort of bluish. It's got some blue in it anyways. So I think I'm going to leave that on there, and I'm going to go up to my global adjustments. Now, it may just appear like this with three sliders. You'll notice that each one of these sliders actually has a little disclosure triangle beside it. So you can open it up and get more options. So we've got brightness, midtone, or brightness, contrast, and structure. I'm going to start with my contrast. So I have just a general contrast adjustment that I can move up, and that gives me just you know general contrast. It moves stuff that's dark towards black, stuff that's light towards white. I also have this amplify whites, and amplify whites. What it does is it looks specifically in the the shadows and tries to brighten the brighter parts of the shadows. So I'm going to increase that a little. I'm also going to come down to this Amplify Blacks, and it's going to look in the highlights, and it's going to try and darken the bright parts of the highlights. So I'm going to move that down, and you'll notice that really helps give me some drama in that, those clouds. Now I want to come down to my contrast again and move that up. I like this image pretty contrasty, so I'm going to move it to be like that. Now I can also come up and adjust the individual parts of the tonal range and brightness. So for instance, I'm starting to get a lot of... Uh, blowing out highlights right here. So I'm going to take this highlight slider and I'm going to move it all the way down and I'm going to recover a little bit of the detail in that sky. Alright, that's all I want to do with brightness. With contrast, I have this soft contrast slider. I find this helpful maybe for portraits and other things where you want soft detail, but in a landscape picture where I want things to look sort of crisp and, and punchy, I really kind of stay away from that. We come down to structure. Structure is uh, an increase in texture. It's a localized contrast adjustment. So as I move this up, you'll notice that things start to look just a little crunchier. So I'm going to move this up to roughly 50%. I can also adjust it in the individual tonal ranges if I want to. And fine structure is really, really small structure. But I find that it tends, if you increase this, it tends to make it look kind of like over sharpening. So I'm going to leave this uh, set around zero. 
I have tonality protection, which just allows me to, in the case of shadows, brighten the shadows, and in the case of highlights, darken the highlights. In this case, I'm fine with it. So that's what I want to do in terms of global adjustments. Now I'm going to come down to this selective adjustment section. I'm going to click on this. And what selective adjustment does is when I click in an image, I'm just going to click right here on this boardwalk. It's looking at what the picture originally, what the color picture that it started with, what color that pixel was, what shades, what texture, and it wants to try and build a mask based on similar pixels within an area of influence. I define the area of influence by this little handle right here that's opposite the little gold dot. So as I move this out, it looks for um, similar pixels in a wider area versus a smaller area. Now if I click right here, I've got control points, and this is control point one. If I click right here, I can see a mask, so the white area is the area that's selected. So if I do this, it's looking for similar pixels, but it's the selection's falling off pretty quickly. If I move this out a little bit, it's looking in sort of a wider swath. So I'm just going to click that off again. There we are. So I want to increase the contrast on this boardwalk. So I'm just going to move that contrast up. And it took a second there to catch up. And maybe see what it looks like with a little extra structure. Does it get crunchy? Eh, a little too crunchy for my taste. There we go. Now I'm going to increase the brightness just a little bit. And maybe push the contrast a bit further. There we are. So, now I like this adjustment, but I want to apply it further up, up here. So I could just dial in the same settings, or what I could do is if I can hold down my Alt key on the PC, or I'm on a Mac, so my Option key, then I can click and drag a copy with these same settings out here, and just drop that there. Maybe I'll click and drag a copy right here, and maybe over here. I can also group these all together so that I can adjust them individually. I'm just going to select them all. I can hold Shift to select multiple. And if I push Command or Control G, now they're all linked. So I can just change the settings over all of them at once. Okay, next, I'm finding this to be area to be a bit dark, especially compared to this area right here. So I'm going to drop in a pin. Now you'll notice as I did that, I'll take that away, that things brightened up. And that's because those points that I had put in before were actually spilling over into this a bit. But when I put a fresh point here, it's now overriding them. And so basically the effect that was spilling over from here into these waters has been removed. I'm going to brighten this up just a little bit. Then I'm going to increase the contrast pretty substantially. Maybe brighten it a bit more. Maybe look at adding a bit of structure. There we are. See how it looks. I'll maybe move this down a little. There we go. Good. I'm and actually, I might need to amplify my whites in the water there. And maybe my blacks too. There we go. I'm also going to come down to these trees. I'm going to click here. And I want the sort of brighter parts of the tree to stand out, so I'm going to use my amplify whites. Like that. But then the overall brightness down a bit. And maybe the contrast up a little bit as well. I'm going to come down to this part of the sky here. Try to darken that down a little bit to see if I've got some detail there that can be recovered. All right. And uh, I might want to just click in here and see if I can, eh, you know what? No, I, I like it better the way that it is. I think perhaps I've, in I've increased this a little too bright in there. So I'm just going to dial that back a bit. And this rail around here is distracting me a bit. So I'm actually going to put a point there and darken it, maybe increase the contrast a bit. And I'll duplicate this by holding Alter Option, drag it out there, drag it out there. So there we are. If I want to see what my original conversion looked like, it's going to click right here. That's the flat conversion, and that's where we are. It's going to click to put that away. So before and after, before and after. It's gotten much better in my opinion. If I want to see what the original color image looks like by comparison, if I go to my history browser right here, I'm going to scroll up to the top and hit the compare button. And now, if I move this little orange slider over to original image, when I hit compare, there's my color image and there's my black and white conversion. Color image, black and white conversion.